1985 and look at a large amount of special features this plane particularly has. We're not going to fly it because what I want to show you mainly is to do with the engine and the prop. So a little bit of history about this plane. It just had a recent um, celebrated past. The end number actually gives the game away if anybody's astute enough, but I've been told I can't say the exact words, but it was used in a popular British espionage franchise and it had like a 30 second shot of it doing what it does on floats. And then it got painted, deregistered, re-registered, new end number and disappeared back into anonymity. But if I said my name was Pilkington, Mark Pilkington, I might give the game away. So it looks like your average MT prop composite. It's got the metal leaning edge to reduce water abrasion and you know when you're IFR in clouds it doesn't erode the front edge of the scimitar blade. But look how much thicker this is. It's, much, it's longer. I mean normally it would be about there. So the reversing mechanism is in here and it's all here. There's hydraulics and pumps and switches. But in, very importantly the propeller doesn't go backwards. It's not like you slam it into reverse and it's bang and then goes the other way. That would work but the engine has to go backwards. So all it does is it goes from this pitch to reverse pitch. So instead of thrust that way, thrust is that way. And you can't do it above 40 knots and there's an arming switch. So it will never happen in flight. So that's the propeller. Let's go inside and look at the mechanism. Then what you do with the propeller is your avionics master switch. Under this one is the arming switch for the prop. So if that is like that, it's a normal propeller and it will be normal forever. If you're thinking, right, I want to use the reversible capability of it, you arm it. That doesn't reverse it, that just arms it. Then on the yoke, there's a tiny little switch right here. So when you're landing, say you're doing a really super short field landing, you touch down, you just pull it towards you and the prop goes into reverse. And, and, it, and obviously that will then push the tail down. So with this being a tail dragger, the tail, the tail cannot go any lower than when it's on the ground. So you can really make it stop in its own length. It would be great for a super stall competition. And then you let go and it relaxes it back into forward thrust. So it's just as needed. So I'll tell you all this before we do it, so we don't have to do it with the engine running and things. If you shut it down with this switch held in reverse, it will stay at zero thrust. So you shut it down, it's in zero thrust, now it's sitting there parked. Next time you come to it and start the engine, it will be at zero thrust. So you've come up to a dock, you've parked it, it's at zero thrust. You can start the engine at the dock, have it running, know it's going to start, passengers get in, get out, get in, get out, and then back away from the dock. Whereas with a normal scenario, you'd have to push it off, and if it was hot, perhaps it wouldn't start. Maybe you're cranking it and it's drifting towards bushes and you've got to rush out with an oar and fend it off because there's no brakes on floats. So this means you can just back it off the dock, turn into wind, put the prop back into forward, disarm that, and take off. It's fantastic. So let's see it in practice. Let's back her up. Right, so at the moment it is a normal plane. Normal propeller, throttle prop mixture, everything's the same. You taxi, you move it around, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like a 185 should be. So say I think, ooh, I need to back up. There's somebody in a corporate jet watching and I want to put it on a tie down. So you arm the propeller here, propeller armed. And this little switch here, I just pull it back towards me. And the prop goes into beta. And I can reverse by adding power. And steering, if it were on slow it would be all over the place, but steering going backwards does make for a little bit of interesting maneuvering. And if you want to go forward, cut the power, release the switch, rev it again, and off she goes forward. Reversing, light, on the power. I don't have a backup camera in this thing, so I've got to be careful. But you could do a three-point turn with it. Forward. And then backing up up a hill. So this, this ramp is not level, watch. Backed it into your tight end. You can steer it pretty nicely backwards. Okay, you backed it onto your tight end. Now, if I put it to idle, 
hold the propeller in reverse, reverse lights on, and kill it, the propeller is now flat, completely flat, zero thrust. So zero thrust, I'm sitting at the dock, people getting in, if you start the engine it's going to pull forward off the bank. So you want to start it, it'll be a normal hot start. When it starts, after you've shut it down, in flat pitch, it stays in flat pitch and has zero thrust. So let's try that. Clear! So right now, there's zero thrust. I could be sitting at the dock, idling, and it will not move. Everybody's in, doors shut, made sure it's running, set it free. Don't just sit here like this. Then you could back away from the dock. Which would take considerably less power if you're on water. And then you're out in the middle of the lake, you're ready to go. Turn off the propeller, reverse is off, and off we go. And that is the reversing pitch pro propeller from MT. When you're reversing, the steerability of the tail wheel is way better when engaged, not when it's free castering. Free castering, it just it would be just in trail, it's whatever you do, but it actually steers backwards very well in the steerable portion of the tail wheel before it goes over center. You could maneuver it all over the place. Hi, so this is Mark at Skywagon University. We just had a quick look around this excellent 73-185 with its, with its um, 90 hour factory new IO550 and a reversible pitch MT on it.